there, Alaskans, wherever you are. Welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. All right. Very good. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. It is the Must Read Alaska show coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. And we are live streaming on Facebook right now and later on in the day today, Monday, June 6th. We will be posting this show to all of our podcast channels, and that includes Pandora and Google Play and iTunes and Podbean and wherever you get your podcast, you'll be able to, to hear this. But welcome to the show um, if you're watching it live today on uh, Facebook where we, uh, we publish it first. I'm Suzanne Downing, and we have a great show today. John Quick is not with us today because he is in Hawaii, and he has a bunch of kids in his room with him there sleeping around and they can't get the kids up and out the door so he can join me as a co-host but that's okay because we have a great guest with us today with Bernadette Wilson and we're going to introduce her in just a minute thank you Bernadette for joining us let me just first thank Charlie Pierce for governor for sponsoring the Must Read Alaska show Charlie Pierce for governor is our first sponsor we're so proud to have his support Charlie has been a big supporter of Must Read Alaska for many years. And when he came in this year as uh, with his campaign supporting our show as the the sponsor, we were so incredibly grateful. And I know that Charlie had a a really successful fundraiser out in Wasilla this weekend. I wanted to go, couldn't make it. I just ran out of, I ran out of time, Charlie, but I would have been there. So, so I want to uh, welcome our guest and my very dear friend, Bernadette Wilson, she is uh, with Americans for Prosperity. She is the, uh, the head, the, the state director for Americans Prosper- for Prosperity in Alaska since last year. But today she'll be speaking as the senior advisor to the Americans for Prosperity Action, I believe is what it's called. And that is their, their sort of the political arm. So she's got her educational arm and her advocacy arm, and then she's got her political arm. And today we, we have her on as a political arm. And Bernadette, you look like you, um, that they put you in cell block one. Um, are you just, <laughs> have you been incarcerated? You know, I'm back here in DC at our headquarters. We've got meetings going on at the Hill all week. And in fact, I'll be meeting with our congressional delegation with both Senator Murkowski and Senator Sullivan's offices while I'm back here. And so I grabbed this, you know, like a side office that was open and I walked in here. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so sterile. It's white all over. Hopefully nobody will come barging through the door, but it's beautiful in DC though. My gosh, it's sunny and uh, high 70s, low 80s. And so the temperature is beautiful, but lots of work back here, um, you know, holding holding the federal side accountable. Right. And it's, this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is your third or fourth trip back to D.C. since you took over over at America's Prosperity Lack back in um, October, whenever it was. Right. Yeah. So so you're make, you're you're getting back to quite a lot. I mean, that they're, they must be highly aware that you're in town. So say hello to all my friends at Lisa Murkowski's office, if I have any left, and say hello to all my friends over at Senator Murkowski's office. And, and uh, if you do stop into uh, our congressman's office, we still have a congressional office there in the House of Representatives. And I do I still do know some of the people there. Uh, my, my friend Paula Connery, who's, who's at the front desk, please give her my regards as well. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, that's one thing that I love about Americans for Prosperity is, you know, within your role as state director, you can come out to D.C. as much as you need to, as much as you feel like. Right. So it's very um, your congressional delegation knows very clearly that Americans for Prosperity has whoever their state director is going to hold you accountable, whether you're in state or whether you're back in Washington, D.C. And that's something that we just haven't had. Right. We just haven't had that. Um, it's kind of strength, right? In Alaska, normally they come back to DC and it's kind of out of sight, out of mind for a lot of people, right? Can feel that way. Um, and so it's really nice to have that opportunity to be back here and to be a face in both places that no matter where they go, they have to see me. So that is that is excellent. Well, I'm, I'm thrilled that you're on the show today. We have some things we want to talk about. Some of these things we would talk about perhaps in your role as 
the state director for Americans Prosperity, and then you have to put on your other hat, I know, when we talk about politics. But just to sort of back up, I've, I've gotten flyers from Americans Prosperity, for Prosperity Alaska on um, things like HB 55, which uh, somehow you killed dead in, in, in the um, legislature. And maybe you could just talk a little bit about that before we go on to your role as the, as the head of the in, independent expenditure group. Right. So HB 55 was the, um, that would have returned the state back to defined benefits. And our big complaint, you know, the, the issue that we had with it was there was no actuarial report. We had no idea how much this was going to cost the state of Alaska. We didn't know where the money was going to come from. We know in states where they have uh, defined benefits, those states typically are on not good financial footing at all, right? Some of them are rank right towards the bottom of the country. So there were some grave concerns there, especially at a time where you have legislators that have said, we need an income tax, we need a sales tax. And by the way, we can't pay out a full permanent fund because we don't have the money to do it, right? That we are on a fiscal cliff so steep. That's not my words, that's words of legislators, right? That's what the legislators have said is that we are on this fiscal cliff so steep that we cannot afford to pay out a full permanent fund. But yet they were gonna turn around and attempt to push through defined benefits. So we were able to successfully um, block that thanks to a help of a lot of legislators, um, Alaska Policy Forum. That was a big team effort uh, to kill that bill. And so we'll keep an eye on issues like that as we move forward. Obviously, we have a huge interest in making sure that Alaska is on financially sound footing. Um, on the education front, I really look forward to working on other educational opportunities as we look forward to the years to come um, in the very near future, right? I shouldn't say years to come sounds like it's far out, but I'm talking like the next session. So um, education reform, you know, repealing of certificate of need. So we've got a big presence uh, in Juno working with legislators to either pass good legislation or to stop bad legislation, right? And so Americans for Prosperity, we have kind of this all encompassing presence. We'll work on legislation. We'll work on, you know, grassroots, getting people to call in and stay active. Every single phone call that we made into the legislature this year on certificate of need or on HB 55 was an Alaskan sitting in our office that said, I am super concerned about this. So we're just helping kind of provide that vehicle and a voice for so many Alaskans that know something is wrong. They feel like something is wrong. They want to be able to hold their elected official accountable. They want their voice to be heard, but they're not really sure like how to do it, when to do it, especially when it comes to Juno. And, you know, you get in those last couple of weeks and hearings are moving like crazy. Things are getting scheduled and there's all the political back and forth chess game that's going on. And so it's it's really good that we're able to kind of provide a little bit of that infrastructure there and a support for Alaskans. And speaking of volunteers, uh, so this weekend I popped into your office, which is it was a, a it's kind of hard to get to since they blocked off the corner of C Street and Diamond. And <laughs> Diamond's it, a I, mess. I know, that was such a mess. I mean, I don't know what they were thinking about. They were gonna they demolished that uh, Dowling Road overpass. So New Seward Highway was really hung up because you had to use the off ramps to go off and then get back on. And then at the same time, they completely blocked off the C Street and, and Diamond interchange there. And so that was that would be the alternate route for most people if they wanted to stay away from New Seward. So right. that was completely blocked off. But I found the back way to your place. And I found that 15 other people found the back way to your place too. And they were all in there. They were cutting off the, the sleeves off these shirts when I walked <laughs> right. in. It was hilarious because you had these American Prosperity shirts. You had all these volunteers and they were all cutting the sleeves off because it was so hot. And they were going to go outside and do door knocking. So, so now putting on your uh, independent expenditure hat, is that what you call it? Uh, your IE hat? Yeah, American. Right. So I also I have another role, right, which is senior advisor to Americans for Prosperity Action and Americans for Prosperity Action had volunteers out knocking this weekend like crazy. We've actually been out um, for the last gosh week, week and a half. We will stay out on the streets from now till November, especially um, with a big emphasis on this congressional race. And so, yeah, it was hot out. They were out cutting out, cutting off the sleeves. But we're out knocking on doors, talking to Alaskans about the issues that matter to them the most and about this congressional race, right? I mean, you look at in Alaska, the high price of gas, right? The concerns around education. We've all have noticed not just the high price of gas, but look at the groceries when you walk into the store, right? I oh, mean, heavens. Alaska, 
Alaska historically has always paid more for things like produce and, you know, just whatever it is in the store. We're always told, well, it's Alaska, it's more to ship it there. Well, you take the inflation and now it's just in Alaska, it's like it's on steroids, right? The price of gas. So, you know, we're getting out, we're talking to people and a lot of people get so busy and caught up in their day to day. They see their, their gas receipt, they see the grocery receipt. And it's like, well, there's inflation, but what's causing that? And then how can we stop it? Right. And how are you going to get your voice heard? So we're out talking to Alaskans about how can we do that? And, you know, door knocking is a first step in the right direction. You know, Suzanne, I've had this conversation with a few people in the last week. We talk about even beyond getting out to vote, right? You want people to get out and vote. But even beyond that, if we're going to hold people accountable, that starts with you making it very clear to them that you're the one that got them elected, right? You have to create a movement that is so big that it sends the message to that individual, this movement is what got you elected. And if you cross us, we will take that exact same movement and that exact same momentum, and we will use it to boot you out we will use it to put pressure on you to do the right thing. But that starts right now, right? And I think in Alaska, we've seen kind of this disconnect, right? You've seen issues come up um, and people will have, there'll be momentum surrounding a certain issue, right? Whether it's patient advocacy, maybe it's something on the municipal level, whatever it is. And I, you know, I challenge Alaskans, you need to create that movement, but you need to create it right now. Because when you create that movement, but it's only surrounding an issue, that elected official, regardless, you know, what, at whatever level of government looks and is like, okay, yeah, whatever, I don't owe you anything, right? But when they know that that movement has the ability to get them elected, that is what puts that, um, you know, accountability, I think, in the back of their mind. So we've been encouraging Alaskans, get out, come door knock with us, because whoever gets this seat, we need to send the message loud and clear that we're out talking to those neighbors. We've got the boots on the ground and come hell or high water. We are the ones first and foremost that you're going to be held accountable to when those tough votes come your way. Right, right. So, so you have been out. So you've been, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. But you picked a candidate though. America's Prosperity has picked a candidate amongst the 48 candidates. You picked Nick Beggich. Nick Beggich all the way. That, as uh, America's Prosperity Action, the Intendix Manager Arm. And uh, you're, you're door knocking and you have flyers that you're giving to people that say Nick Baggage on them. And I've gotten, I think, three of these flyers at my house, these uh, four by five cards. And they're very, uh, very well done, by the way. I must, I must compliment you on that. And you're talking to people in the neighborhoods. Uh, where were you talking to them? Which neighborhoods were you in over this weekend? Um, so where I personally was at was over like off of the 100th, kind of that Southport area. Right. Um, we've had volunteers out all over. Um, but for me personally, you know, I put on my jean skirt, and my flip flops and off I went. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so it's it's been really, you know, it's interesting talking with people about the issues that matter to them. And, you know, we you know, you go back here a while back and we endorse Nick and it was pretty easy for us after the lay of the land um, was out after people had gotten in the race. That's when we endorsed. Right. We did not make the choice to endorse before people, everyone else had gotten in. We made that decision after, and it was a pretty easy decision for us. You know, the fact that Nick had um, stood up and said, listen, the PRO Act is bad. The infrastructure bill is going to hurt us, right? That's coming back to you in the form of a tax. So the fact that Nick took some pretty strong stances and took them before anybody else was willing to stand up and say, hey, there's a problem, right? So what that is an indication of for us is it seems to be a very clear indication that when we want someone to stand up, on the house floor, even when it's not popular and say, listen, there's a problem. Nick has that courage and that conviction to do it. And we've seen it. He's still one of the only candidates. I mean, Suzanne, I watched a debate here about a week ago or so, um, maybe a couple of weeks back, still the only candidate to take some very straight positions right. on, I would vote yes, I would vote no. And this is the reason why we, we still haven't seen that come out of anyone else. Right. Um, we've seen Nick say, Hey, you know what? I, yeah, I regret that I had this vote or I did this or that. I'm not getting answers like that from anyone else. Right. There's a lot of answers. Um, and so, you know, it's interesting when you're out at the doors and you start talking to people about Nick and who Nick is, and there is this really, um, I think the overall sense of just like, Oh my gosh, you mean there's someone like that in this race? You mean there's someone that has all this business experience that knows what it's like to build a business. You mean there's someone that has a kid 
that he's trying to bring up in the education system in Alaska, just like I am? You mean there's someone that did stand up before it was popular and said, oh my gosh, this PRO Act was bad for Alaska? You mean there's someone that has that backbone and that nerve? And they're just so relieved, right? Because even if they've heard Nick's name, to have someone there on their front porch to sit down and talk with them about the issues um, has proved like very compelling for people. And, you know, it's fun this weekend. I had a couple people say, hey, do you mind if I come out? Can I just sit on the front porch with you? Can we talk? Sure, you know, (laughs) and some of them have already voted. Um, some of them hadn't voted, but it's really interesting when you get talking to people about who Nick is and as people start diving into his background, right. And bona fide credentials that are there, um, you know, that, that far outshine his last name. Right. I joke with people, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that people don't hold some of my family members politics against me. Cause boy, I'll tell you what, if you guys knew some of the politics of my family members, you would not think I was a conservative at all. So I, I relate to Nick a lot on that level. And as we, as I get out and get talking to people, it's really fun to see the just kind of that excitement and that, wow, I can't, you know, I can't wait to vote for him or, um, you know, learn more, whatever it is. So the door knocking experience has been has been awesome. We've had lots of people out at this point. We have hit thousands of homes. OK, um, so let's 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 talk about how many homes you've hit, Liz, because before you hit this weekend, you'd already hit fourteen hundred homes. So now what are you up to? So I, I don't know if I'm allowed to give out that number yet. Um, okay. I think we're still tallying numbers up, but they're- Oh, that's they're right. Doing, it's only Monday. Yeah, they're doing pretty good. So numbers are still coming in from this weekend. But um, I mean, like you mentioned, you know, we have, we've had more than a dozen people out there and people will be out um, consistent, especially hard this week. I will give a shameless plug and say for anyone that wants to come door knock with us, come find um, our office or reach out, you know, send an email, find us on Facebook. We're literally like everywhere. Well, where can they send an email to if they want to come and, and, and like the, to Sarah Hatemi who works with you or. Yes. Yep. Sarah, Sarah Hatemi. Yep. S Hatemi at AFP. Um, Her at, and we can post that um, email too in the comment section, but if people go to our Facebook page, there's information up there. There's a flyer up there. Um, so they can find it, but encouraging people to come out. Like I said, if we want to have a conversation about accountability, we have to understand that accountability starts before they get elected, right? It starts with you helping to get that person elected so that they know, right? It goes so much further than just your vote, right? Your vote's a good step in the right direction, but it's got to be more than just your vote. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I didn't get a chance to go door to door with you, but it sounds from the people that I've talked to, it sounds like that they had a good experience, that people are liking what they're hearing from you guys and that no, not too many people are slamming your door in your face. But it does, it does look to me like this race is shaping up to be a two, like a two lane race. One is a sort of a Sarah Palin and then the other is the Nick Begich, which is really interesting because this is, a conservative seat, you've got, uh, uh, you know, a conservative state, but Don Young himself wasn't that conservative. He really was a kind of a, it was quite a moderate. And if you look at his votes through time, as he progressed, as he got older, his votes got more and more liberal and more, much, much more liberal. In fact, he was promoting things like red flag laws and gun control even toward the end. But um, we have a chance to, to capture this seat for a conservative. And it looks to me like a two lane race right now. Not a lot of uh, uh, we're not getting a lot of interest in some of the other candidates. Are you hearing any other names that that popped None. up? None. Yeah. None. It's That's incredible in at the door. It's just those two names. Right. It's mm-hmm. Palin and it's Nick. Those are the only two names, Suzanne, out of the doors that we have hit. You might get a one-off out of the thousands of homes that we have hit. You might find maybe one that offered another name, but they are all um, Nick Nick or Palin. So it's very clear to us that that's who this race will end up being between, right? That those are going to be your two uh, front runners, especially once we wrap up on Saturday, right? Remember to everybody, your ballots have to be postmarked by this Saturday, June 11th. So it's pretty clear to us that it's going to be those two. No other names at the door. Even when you ask people, you know, who are you looking at? Is there, did you, have, you know, what are you thinking as far as other candidates? 
I, no one can really offer you a name, which was a, a little bit, you know, if I look at the kind of the political consultant side of my work, right, it was a little bit surprising. I have to be honest. I thought that I would have seen at least a little bit more momentum um, from other candidates. And it's it's just not there. We're, we're not yeah. seeing it. You know, Nick has done a when you look at those two campaigns, right, um, Sarah has kind of captured that national feel, right? The, I got the big name endorsements. I've got the mm-hmm. money coming in from the outside. I mean, I think she's raised yeah. all of like 13,000 from Alaskans, right? So she's kind of carved out this national stage kind of celebrity niche that she has, right? And she's hoping right. that the name ID and the celebrity is what's going to carry her. When you look at Nick, it's been completely an opposite run campaign, Absolutely right? Absolutely opposite. Yeah. He, he's been on the ground. I think <laughs> darn near all of his money has come from Alaskans. Right. It's this very grassroots, is is non celebrity as you could possibly get, but very strong. So you have these two can these two campaigns being run two very very different ways. Um, you have other campaigns that are kind of falling somewhere in the middle of each of of those, right? I mean, you've got other campaigns that have kind of gone after the DC money or the DC um, endorsements, that sort of thing kind of the behind the scenes politics of it all. But it's really these two campaigns that are emerging. And so it'll be interesting to see what do Alaskans do, right? Do we fall for the classic name ID, celebrity status type of thing? Or do we go back to what we claim to be, which is very grounded, and we're going to look at the issues, and we're going to look at the black and white facts of the matter? And do we go that direction, right? We like to think that we're very solid, straight thinking, like factual Alaskans, right? We like the facts. We're going to base it off of these values that we hold that we know are good for Alaska. Well, let's see, right? I mean, the challenge let's just is take after a Alaska, what, do you, what are you going to do, right? We're the first ones to, you know, I remember when um, the movie industry was in Alaska, I was like, well, we're not going to be the starstruck, right? We're not going to do that. We're not going to be influenced by outsiders. We don't want to be influenced by outsiders, well, wow. we'll see, right? Are we about to be influenced <laughs> by outsiders or are we about to let the, the grassroots on the ground, our friends and neighbors um, decide the direction of this election? We'll see. So my prediction is that we will probably see, uh, uh, okay, so we know that Saturday you've got to get your ballot postmarked by. And if you walk into the post office on Saturday, don't drop it in the mailbox because there is a chance that they that they just won't get to the postmark on Saturday. And right. if you don't have a postmark on it, forget about it. It's not going to count. And the other thing is make sure you have a a, a, a signature on there from a witness. And, and don't be shy. You've got to get a witness signature. Anybody can do it for you. You can just walk walk across the street and, and everybody needs a witness. This is not something you should feel like. I mean, you know, this this witness thing, I, I hate it because um, a lot of people are just shy people. We've got so many introverts in Alaska and they don't like asking for help and they don't right. want anybody to have to help them with their ballot. But you do need to get that witness signature. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And then your, your ballot's got to get in by the, the 11th. After that, the first count is going to be on the night of the 11th. The second count is going to be on the night of the 15th. The third count is going to be on the night of the 27th. No, I'm sorry, the 17th. And then the final count, I think around the 25th, will be the final count. So basically, they should be able to get through all of those ballots that, you know, there's only going to be 125,000. They should be able to run them all that first night. I, there, we really will have a good sense on Saturday of where this is going. Now, I predict, Bernadette, that we will have, uh, that Palin and Nick will be kind of even, you know, the two front runners, and then everybody will, else will split the votes and drop back from there. But I think that we'll also see uh, a, in third place, probably Al Gross, because he just finished running two years ago, he has 142,000 votes that he knows he can get. Most of those people are still in state. And so he knows how to reach them because he's got his lists and he knows how to talk to them because he, he's, they've done all the work to know what made those voters vote his way. So I think he'll be number three. And then when it comes to number four, I kind of think it might be Tara Sweeney, it might be Mary Peltola. It could be one of those. Tara Sweeney has got a tremendous number of signs out and, a, and a, she's just absolutely blasting the airways with her message because this is name ID problem for her. She doesn't have, she didn't start with good name ID, but I think that's what we're looking at. And when are you um, coming back? Are you going to be able to do any more door knocking yourself or? Yeah, I see you're I nodding will. your head. Heck you yeah. Knock doors <laughs> 
Oh, heck yeah. Well, I love getting, well, you know, I think as, as Alaskans know, I love getting out with everyone and seeing them. And it was a blast this past weekend. I mean, the kids were out, right. They're like riding their um, power wheels and their bikes and the sprinklers are going and people are out in their yards and in their garages. So no, I love to get out in door knock, especially when the weather is like this. That's why I tell everyone it's, it's a lot of fun, but um, so no, I will be back. Um, Okay. I will be back here in just a few days. So I've got just a quick trip down here, kind of packed it all in tight. And then I'll, I'll be back. And even while I'm gone, we've got a whole team of people, grassroots. I mean, they're out door knocking today, actually. Okay. Um, and so they'll be out all week long. So you don't have to worry about me, you know, being home or not being home. If someone wants to go door knock, they absolutely can. And um, I agree with you. I think you've got those top four. I think Sweeney will end up being that top four, but I think you'll have your two and then you'll probably have a pretty significant um, drop off, right? By the time you get to number four. And then what'll so. be interesting, Suzanne, is so will I I think that by the third count, we're gonna have a pretty solid idea on who our top four are, right? Oh yeah. By the by the time you get to the 25th, remember the 25th is also the last day that you can drop out That's for right. the next for the next August election. For right? the actual primary for the regular primary. Right. For the the permanent replacement, right? Yeah. So what will be interesting is I think right now, you know, on this ballot, you've got 48 names. Right now on the August ballot, I think you've got like 38. Am I right on that? At this point, yeah. Right. So what'll be interesting to see is after, you know, we get to like June 17th, June 20th or June 25th, that last day to drop out, how many people drop out or does Santa Claus still say to hell with Christmas, I'm still going? I mean, send me to DC. I don't know. They may just stay on there. as like, you you look at people like Andrew Halker, who's on the ballot. He has not filed his FEC report for, for his, his finances. He has not filed with the clerk of the Congress, his financial disclosures. It's a big marketing campaign for some, some of the, for, for him. He's, he's just marketing himself. In other words, he's going to be on the ballot and every Alaskan will see his name, but it's, um, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a racket, quite honestly, for some of these folks, they aren't really serious candidates. You know what I have to tell you, this is fascinating and I won't say who, but I talked to a certain Democrat legislator just yesterday and he said, Andrew Halper is running for Congress. I said, yes. Yeah. I mean, that's a legislator, right? Uh-huh, like, uh-huh. oh, come on, guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a well, listen, it's, it's been so good to have you. I know you've got to go. You've got to put your your heels on and go across the street or wherever you are to go visit our congressional delegation over there again. Say hello to our friends over in Murkowski's office and, and Sullivan's office, and please stop by if you have a chance to see who, you know, who's left over there in Don Young's office. I know they have to keep that open for Alaskans and hopefully we'll have somebody in there pretty soon filling that seat with your help. And I want to thank you for being on our show and thank Charlie Pierce for governor for sponsoring our show. Your, your sponsorship means the world to us, Charlie Pierce. Thank you so much for making sure that we can get our message out with conservative news, conservative guests that we get all over Alaska and every nook and cranny. And thank you so much for that. And for, for everybody else, uh, you can join us either on Pandora, you know, Amazon, it's Google Play, iTunes. We, John Quick posts them everywhere. You can find the Must Read Alaska show. So you can check this out later. And also on Wednesday, John will be back with me and we will be doing another show on Wednesday. So until then, Bernadette's signing off from somewhere in D.C. and I'm signing off from somewhere in Alaska. Bye, everybody.